Glory to God forevermore. Welcome again to this great time of television, actually. We came to tell you a vision. You know, where there is no vision, the people perish. Abel Damina is my name, and I'm excited about the opportunity to fellowship with you today in the light of the truth concerning Christ. We have quite exciting news for you. You know, wherever you're watching around the world, I'd like you to come in, come in, come in. We're giving you a few seconds to come in, and while we're giving you these few seconds to come in, once again, Abel Damina is my name. I'm excited today. You know, and I have with me today in this short time of fellowship, Dr. Gabriel, whom you're conversant with, and it's an honor and a joy to have you with me. Dr. Gabriel, Papa, great grace. Thank you so much, Papa. I'm telling I'm so you, excited. we're going to have a nice time. Wonderful time. Great time of fellowship this also afternoon. Wonderful. You know, we wanted to help us invite people, invite people all over the world, friends, families, invite everyone that follows this ministry, ask them to hook up something exciting, something interesting is coming, you know, your way. You know, there's a mandate of God on my life to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. That's the vision that is driving us to do the things that we do around the world. And today we've got quite exciting announcements for you and a few things to share with you that will lighten up your day, that will excite your spirit, and that will set your mind thinking about the faithfulness of God. First of all, I believe East Africa, East Africa, East Africa. You know, Dr. Gabriel, I was in East Africa for two weeks or so, towards the end of last year. As soon as we flew into Mombasa, you know, as we flew in, just as we were touching down, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said to me, this is the time for East Africa. There is a move of God all over East Africa right now. You know, Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they didn't know the time of their visitation. He wept over Jerusalem. And he said, because they didn't know the time of their visitation, their enemies will come and cast a trench about them and take advantage of them. The Bible speaking concerning the sons of Issachar said that the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times and their brethren were at their command. East Africa, this is your time. The revelation of Jesus covering the entire Eastern African countries like never before, there is a flood. You know, there's a, there's a season upon East Africa. I sense that strongly in my heart. And when we go into the conferences, because I went through a number of cities in, Eastern, uh, in Nairobi, precisely Kenya, Kenya precisely. In fact, they gave me a band, and I promised them I was going to put it on so they can <laughs> see that I identify fully with, with, with Kenya. You know, Pastor Jane and her team gave me this, and I told them, when I'm doing this broadcast, I'll put it on so they can see, you know. So when I was with them, I told them that God specifically told me it's time for East Africa. And now we're going to visit East Africa a number of times. Now, we are coming to East Africa with a training school, a Bible school, a place where we want to equip, train, build doctrine into you and bring ministry out of you. East Africa, all the countries, Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, Burundi, um, all those countries, Eritrea, you know, um, Tanzania, all those countries around the Eastern African region, this is your Bible school. This is the opportunity you've been looking for. This is that moment you've been looking for to have clarity concerning the doctrine of Christ. Clarity concerning your alarming questions from the scripture. Clarity on what is ministry. Clarity on what is the message called the gospel. Clarity on how to interpret scriptures. Clarity on how to dissolve the seeming contradictions in scripture. It's going to be intensive and it's going to be enlightening. It's going to be equipping and it's going to be challenging. You will leave the Bible school totally transformed, ready to transform your world. It takes a transformed man yes, to transform his world. Yes, Dr. Gabriel, what should the brethren 
in East Africa expect as a result of the Bible school? You've been involved with a number of our Bible schools. What should they expect as we come to East Africa? The dates for the East African program is going to be from the, I'm trying to get the dates right here because I have a number of information to bring across. The East African Bible School is going to be from the 18th of April to the 29th. The 18th to the 29th of April. That's two weeks in East Africa. Training and equipping and building men and women as an army for Jesus Christ that will preach this gospel like never before. What should the people that are planning to attend and those that have not yet planned, those that don't even know about the Bible schools, coming to Nairobi from the dates we've just announced, which is actually the 20, I mean the 18th of April to the 29th of April. Dr. Gabriel. Yes, Papa. Papa, for me, it's a wonderful opportunity all the time to always be on set with you, just sharing and fellowshipping with the world. Uh, for me, Papa, this question is one of the questions that uh, I like answering because I'm the beneficiary and also one who are a recipient of the grace of God upon your life that has become a blessing to the globe. Um, it's, it's evident that before I met the mandate that God has placed on your life in your preaching by listening from afar, I had what you call cliches mm. and I'd been following from afar and there are things that were not actually together. But knowing that the Bible school was coming, and I made up my mind for the Bible school, the first thing I did was first to be sincere with myself. That's right. Sincerity of heart. That with what I am beginning to receive from afar, and there is scriptural balancing, there is effective Bible accurate interpretation. I needed to get everything together. That's right. So the Bible school offers me that platform. That's right. So for me, it was answered prayer. So I now made up my mind in sincerity. I'm going here to learn. So I came with the mind of a student. And what you should expect, brethren, is come with the mind of one who is ready to learn. Papa used to say something, and that thing keeps ringing and echoing all the time. Be ready to learn, unlearn, then relearn. And Dr. Gabriel, yes. they need to know that that was not when you came in contact with ministry. Yes, sir. You've been in ministry for some years. For some a years. Number of years. A number of years. You know, before yes, you got in before contact, I in talk, in contact. And you were preaching the other gospel. I was preaching the other gospel. They need and, to know and, and Papa, like Friday, Saturday is the most tormenting moment of my life. Hmm. Because you get boost from motivational speakers. In fact, you become more confused than even the people you are teaching. Hmm. So I gather all the books and I'm trying to... So it's a frustrating moment. And yet, after the meeting, you are still frustrated because there is no peace, no fulfillment. Yeah, yeah. So teaching all these years... I didn't really understand the gospel, the, even the ministry I claimed to have been all my life. So coming to the Bible school and hearing you teach, apart from what I was just catching, yeah. hearing you teach, the first thing that struck me is to find out that the message is one. That's right. That was the first thunderbolt that hit me. Because, you know, there are those who are called to preach salvation, healing, prosperity, mm -hmm. faith, with, with that mindset. Yeah. So coming to the Bible school class and hearing that the message is one, and you traced it from Genesis across the scriptures, that that was the message, and in the prophecy of the prophet, in the writings of Moses, yep. from Genesis, I, 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 it blew me away completely. So I knew I was up against a complete total turnaround. That's right. And I had to make up my mind that I need to know this thing. So coming this way, whatever you have learned over time, you need to like first be sincere with yourself, and make up your mind to learn, or learn to relearn. And it will go a long way in establishing you and making you the man that actually God can use. That's right. Because there is where you position yourself, God can actually use you. Mm -hmm. Because his word has to be taught. That's right. And the impact and the power is in his word. And now you don't have the words to teach or to preach. That means God's power is short-circuited. It's actually limited to rich people. Right. So what we'll be doing, I was doing before, is a form of religion. Mm. Something that looks like, let's do like what every other person is doing. Mm. And see, we may eventually arrive there. But that there is a place we never arrive. That's right. So frustration kept building up. Uh, sentiment kept building up. Uh, fatigue. Pressurized yeah. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Calculations. Yeah. You calculate and recalculate. Yeah. How to gather crowd. How to you. So you were, you were learning tricks and learning the ropes. But we never knew we have left the main thing, which is sound doctrine. Very true. Which I have not laid a grasp on. 
So coming to the Bible school now made me, I made up my mind. I'm going to know this thing. Now that I've got to know who my father is, whom I drink from, afar is not enough. I need to come close. So for me, it was an answered prayer. Wow. So I came close and I took my seat and I sat down and everything that happened, I copied. Wow. I listened and I listened. Then again, at the cost of the Bible school, of course, you buy the books. Yes. Then sat down with your messages. That is the other thing I did to myself after the Bible school. Mm. Sat down with your message on subject matters you have taught because you teach in series. Yeah. I will sit down and listen to track one and make my notes. I dubbed the entire note verbatim mm. and made sure I went over them because I needed to be proficient in the things now that I profess. That's right. So I needed to really be, I don't like doing things haphazard. No. I want to be thorough. So I need to sit down and really labor. That's right. And that helped me at the course of my journey. So for East Africa, for them is answered prayer because no, really. that impression God has placed in your heart for East Africa is an opportunity for somebody out there who has been desiring that I need to get this thing full and complete. Of course, it is going to be systematic yeah. in a way that all pegs will fall in the right holes. That's right. And before you know it, your persuasion your conviction, everything will be sound and total That's right. and complete. You know, there can be no genuine spiritual growth. That's right. no gen you can be in ministry for 20, That's 30 right. years, That's 15 right. years, right. 40 years without a genuine spiritual growth. Yes, Papa. Yes, Papa. You are just having a form, a form full of activity, yes, but no genuine spiritual growth. Yes, and it will reflect in your message. It will reflect in your content, yes, and it will reflect in the way you go about ministry. Because the message defines the pattern. The message that you preach defines the pattern of your ministry. Until you come to a place of, Brother Paul says to Timothy, yes, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable, number one, for doctrine. The word didascalia, teaching or explanation. So the first encounter you have is with teaching or explanation, which will produce reproof. The word reproof there is the word evidence, evidence, electros, evidence. That is, the scriptures, when they are taught and explained, will build in you persuasion. It's a message of conviction, a message of persuasion, which will now produce correction. Correction, That's ephanatus. That's right. Correction. That is a resetting of your mind. Right. That is where imaginations are cast down. That is where thought patterns are corrected. That is where a thinking process is initiated. The wrong one is brought down in the light of Christ. So there can be no spiritual growth, genuine spiritual growth, if you jump the process of teaching and explanation, which will bring conviction or persuasion, which now causes you to unlearn and relearn. Listen, you're not approaching the word of God to just ask questions. You're not approaching the word of God to look for faults. You are coming humbly before the word of God to understand. You're coming with a mind to understand. So you begin to interrogate the scriptures in the light of Christ. Right. Then the scriptures come alive. Right. Then the scriptures now tells us that after teaching, which is the first thing, yes, the second thing is persuasion, yes, the third thing is correction, right. the resultant effect mm will be instruction in righteousness, pedia. Yes. That is to bring up a child by the way of the mouth. So spiritual growth, which is instruction in righteousness, will be as a result of teaching, persuasion, correction, before there can be spiritual growth. Yes, now, many ministers and even believers, they jump that process. Yes, they just want to grow spiritually. Yes. They think it's by fasting and prayer. Yes. No, it's not by fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer has its own place. Yes. But for genuine spiritual growth, it will come by the word. By the word. Yes, sir. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. That's what Peter said, that you may grow thereby. He says, grow in grace and grow in knowledge. So growth in knowledge is growth in grace. It will take a balanced feeding of God's word to produce genuine spiritual growth. Yes, That's why Brother Paul will take time to emphasize to Timothy yes, to pay attention to doctrine, yes. sound doctrine. He talks about rightly dividing the word of truth. All of that is critical to spiritual growth. Rightly dividing, ototomio. Yes. So if there's a right way to divide, it means there's a wrong way to divide. Yes. A preacher who preaches any scripture that is not rightly divided is lying. Yes. 
Yes, sir. Any yes, scripture sir. that is preached by any preacher, doesn't matter how long you've been preaching, yes, sir. and if that scripture is not rightly divided in the light of Christ, what you are preaching is a lie. It doesn't matter how much you jump. It doesn't matter how much you shout. It doesn't matter how much you scream or roll on the floor or who fell under the power while you were preaching. Yes. As long as that scripture was not rightly divided yes. in the light of Christ, you were lying all through. Oh. And the Holy Ghost does not confirm lies. No, sir. Result does not justify truth. No, truth is truth because it is truth. It is a stand alone. It yes. does not need anything to validate it. Yes. It is self-validated. Yes, the truth is self-validated. That is why it is critical, therefore, for those of you in the southern Africa, I mean the eastern African region, all of Kenya, all of Eritrea, all of Uganda, all of Tanzania, all of Ethiopia, all of South Sudan, you know, all of that area of Africa, come out in your numbers to Nairobi. That's where we're going to be stationed for two weeks now. The details will be coming on the screen, the phone numbers to call, the email address to reach out and ask for forms quickly and get yourself registered, the WhatsApp numbers. We're going to give you all of that before we, we sign off this broadcast. But friends, East Africa, get ready. That's right. It's your time. It's going to be exciting. Oh. Ministers of the gospel, get ready. Believers that are hungry to be used of God. Christians that are frustrated in churches because what they are, they are looking for us is not being taught. The truth is not being taught. Or you, you, you are tired of church. You are tired of religion. You are looking for a vibrant, active relationship with God. These two weeks will change your life forever. Yes. You know, Dr. Gabriel, yes, you've sir. been to a number of our Bible schools. Yes, sir. And the testimony among students is consistent. Yes, sir. Can you just share a little bit with the brethren out there? Papa, the, the, the testimonies are... They are, uh, they are numerous, and the testimonies are in such a way that more the testimony have a particular common denominator. And the testimony is this, is that they are coming to the Bible school, change their entire perspective about God, about the scripture, about what the message is, about their entire life. Praise because God. it is a complete shift from what he used to know. Like, one experience with one person becomes an ex the experience with all. Because it's, you are confronted with the reality of the scriptures. That's right. Proper Bible interpretation is the core. Proper. Like the first class we did when I came is we did a hominetics. Yes. Inter Bible interpretation. Yes. That is just the, the, the blow that shattered everything. That's right. Because what the scriptures you used to think that this is what the interpretation is, you find the interpretation is completely different. And we were taught contextually by you. You, know, you are holding the Bible in your hand. Yes. And you are asked to read it yourself. That's right. And you were seeing the progression. That's right. You know, like in the charismatic Pentecostal circle, Papa, we are not used to contextual reading. Yes. We like noise, Every but no context. Every scripture is materialistic. It's <laughs> materialistic. In the Pentecostal charismatic, every That's scripture right. you read is about is money, 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 That's which right. is not the truth. It's not the truth. Yep. So that is what we kept doing. So when you not take the scripture, I remember one of those classes, it was like a talk of war that we're all building Bible and you were telling each person to read. Yes. Because all, all the narratives was headed for materialism. Yes. And you were just debunking the whole thing and it was like a frustrated class because it was the first class that we're seeing five, first Bible interpretation. Yes. So it was like, that cannot be true. How can everything, but the fact is telling us in the face That's right. that the scripture, the Bible you are holding, not Papa's Bible, yes. you were asked to read from it. That's right. You read, so I know a friend, who read and got to a point, his voice was going low. <laughs> he was because, getting disappointed. Yeah, getting disappointed. He, you asked him to read. Yes. He read. And the next verse, then you said next verse. He read. You now say next verse. So the more he went down the line, his, voice, <laughs> his volume went low. That's right. Then on his own, he didn't read to the place you asked him to read. Yeah. He sat down. <laughs> When he started, I said, this is it. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. Because, so every other person, okay, take this scripture. So we went home and we took all the scripture. I told a friend of mine, I said, I called him all the way from northern Nigeria. I said, Papa has just disgraced us and undressed everybody in the Bible school. <laughs> he said, what happened? He said, every scripture we had... We call ministry scriptures. Yes. Papa took them and destroyed them. <laughs> so now we're ministryless. <laughs> he busted into laughter. <laughs> I said, Papa took everything. We, you, we shot this one, you took it and broke it. Yeah. Brought this one, you broke it. We brought everything, you broke it. Yeah. Then and I told myself, I, I told him, I said, 
Now we are here now. We don't have a ministry. <laughs> <laughs> we are without ministry. Because <laughs> that is what we are priding ourselves yeah, on. Yeah. Those scriptures that we, we front. Yeah. You, you destroyed everything. Yeah. We, we now said, okay, no problem. <laughs> <Let's start. laughs> and you know, there are people watching there who have so many questions, so many unanswered questions. And there are also ministers of the gospel who don't even know what ministry is. Yes, Papa. They're in it, but they don't know what yes, it Papa. is. Yes, Papa. You know, they will not know that they don't know what it is until they come to the Bible school until and we come. confront them with the realities from the scriptures. From the scriptures. From the scriptures, this is not human philosophy. Yes. This is not human psychology. This is scripture interpreting itself. Yes. Scripture interpreting itself yes. until we arrive at the truth. That's what we call exegesis. It's going to be exciting, exciting. You can imagine yourself with us in a class every day from morning till evening. We go from scripture to scripture. You ask questions, we clear them. We go scripture to scripture. You ask questions, we clear them. We pray together. We come back. We teach. We pray together for hours every day from morning till evening for two weeks. There's even the color of your skin is guaranteed to change <laughs> right. under that atmosphere. That's right. It's electric. That's right. I mean... Is it the prayer times the in prayer Bible times, school? The prayer times. The prayer times oh, in Bible school, oh, they goodness. are transformational. Saturated. They prayer. are transformed. Uh, the uh, whole uh, atmosphere uh, is electric. electric. Anything uh, can happen uh, under those atmospheres. That's and that's where revelation that's knowledge right. flows freely right. like a flood yes. under that atmosphere. Yes. And we're looking forward to seeing all of you, you know, in Nairobi, all of you in Kenya, all of you in Tanzania, all of you in Uganda, all of you in Eritrea, all of you in South Sudan, those all of you in Ethiopia. We're looking forward to meet all of you in Nairobi. It's going to be days of heaven on the earth. I'm really excited about it. Dr. Gabriel, we'll be there together. Yes, It's going to be class, classes that will transform people's minds. I believe that it is time for East Africa. I'm fully persuaded. This is the time for East Africa. Now, just before we tidy up, we are also coming to South Africa. South Africa, get ready. The dates for South Africa will be the 11th, the 11th of May to the uh, 11th of May to the 15th. 11th to the 15th of May, South Africa. And we're going to have School of Ministry in the morning, and we're going to have Believers Conference in the evening from the, the 11th of, 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 of May. That is a Wednesday to Sunday. It's going to be five days that will change your life in South Africa. All of our churches in the Sadiq region will assemble in South Africa. All our churches in Zambia, all the brethren, if you're in Zambia, begin to get ready. All the brethren in Zambia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Namibia, Lesotho, South Africa itself, all will be assembling and converging together at the Beulah Park International Conference Center. Beulah Park International Conference Center, 437 Sam Green Street, Mid Middledale, Jeminston. And then the numbers to call for details for the South African Conference will be displayed at the end of this broadcast for those who want to call and be part of the conference in South Africa. You know, this year is training, training, yes. equipping, equipping, yes. training, training, because there can be no genuine ministry yes, in the absence of sound doctrine. Yes, it is sound doctrine that makes ministry ministry. Yes, sir. Sound doctrine. Brother Paul will say, the things you have heard, you have heard, that is the things I have taught you, the things you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men who shall commit to others. Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded. Yes. Which means what you will preach is what you have heard from Jesus. Mm. Which means what you will preach is what you have heard from Paul. So Christianity is, is historic and apostolic. Yes. What the apostles did, what Jesus did, the chief cornerstone, has been handed over to us in a message. That's why even miracles, signs, and wonders will be as a result of teaching. Because the Lord was working with them, confirming his word, his word with signs and wonders. So it's going to be by teaching. It is teaching that will command miracles. It is teaching that will command spiritual growth. It is teaching that will set free. It is teaching that will equip. It is teaching that will, you know, prepare the man of God to be thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished yes. onto every good work. God. So South Africa, we're coming in May from the 11th to the 15th. Kenya, Nairobi, for all of the East African region. We are coming from April the 18th to the 29th. 
you don't want to miss these two great Goodness. opportunities. <laughs> Dr. Gabriel, tell, tell the viewers one more time just before we go, yes, you know, the attitude with which they, they should attend these conferences. Yes. But the one in East Africa yes. and the one in South Africa. Yes, Papa. Very strategic and very score question. There is an attitude to attend our Bible school conference with. Number one is a learner's attitude. An attitude of one who does not know and wants to know. Because most people come to the Bible school to come to show how much they know. Only to find out they know nothing. That's right. And those who come to find out what they don't know, they eventually go back learning much. Truth. Because they came with a learner's attitude. Truth. That's number one. Number two, don't come with an ears, a disorder, a hearing disorder called selective hearing. Very important. You have a disorder. It's a disorder that you have a preconceived idea and you are not ready to drop that, you, have, you, you are there to select the one that seems to like touch on something that will enhance your error and religion, you take that. The one that bulldozes and punches hard at your practice and position, you drop and treat lightly. And that's why it's dangerous. You can't learn under such atmosphere. True. You pay rapt attention. And you come with an attitude of somebody that wants to learn. Very true. It's very, very important. And it's also good for you to know, as a student, you are coming with the mind of a student and be ready to write because there are no handouts. That's right. You will write because those materials, I still use my materials from the Bible school in teaching. That's what you use. I teach with it. I look at them. Then I read again. Then I listen to Papa's message and I expand the scope of my note. Your notebook becomes your resource material. And you're not even permitted to record the teaching. No recording. That's right. You are not. It's, 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 for, it's, it's, it's against the law. You can't record. So why? The idea is to build in you the student mentality from the onset. Because Papa, many of us, charismatic Pentecostal, we, when it comes to being studios, it comes to learning, we're very poor. Mm. Because all we do is just listen and copy, yeah. then cliches, yeah. then go preach. Yeah. Now, you are being challenged to sit in the class from morning till evening, and that discipline, yeah. Papa, most young men lack the concentration of sitting down. And it is a, it's a practical test to your mental focus. A man, when you that, sit down, a man that cannot sit down, down cannot build a tower. Jesus said, no man builds a tower yes. until he first of all sits down. Sit down. Critical. So many are like Critical. that. Critical. Very restless. Very restless. Want to move around. People that God will use are not like that. That's they right. are people who are found in a place. Yeah. You must sit down and be taught. Sit down and burn the hours, burn the time. Because that's how you are going to become the person that will affect the world. That's right. Papa, I watch you a lot of times by observation. Because learning is by precept and example. Yep. You tell me how much time I come to your study. Yep. I see what you do with time. It's discipline. Yep. You have disciplined yourself over time. That's right. Many are not like that. So a young minister coming to the Bible school, the first psychological discipline you will have is the ability to sit down for hours. That's right. Teachings are going on. You are disciplined to write. That's right. And still maintain focus. That's right. That is what you will need to go on with ministry. That's right. That is part of your practical lesson and teaching. And of course, get ready to pray. <laughs> because That's in right. this Bible school, you will pray. That's right. Because prayer sets the, the tone yeah. for the teaching, for the instruction, for the impartation, and all that we go through in the Bible school. And it is very, very critical that you set your mind and get yourself ready and prepare yourself on those things. And again, it's important for you to know that as you are getting ready for the Bible school, in as much as you are coming, you are not going to be doing selective hearing. You are going to maintain the position of somebody who is meek. Mm. Meekness is not a state of your disposition. No. How you look and how you prostrate to greet somebody. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Meekness is that you came to the Bible school, you were confronted with scriptural clear evidence on the subject matter that you have not, you have been holding precious for a while. All of a sudden, you saw it clearly stated, you dropped your position and took the scriptural position. Agree that is God. meekness. That's right. Agree with God. That's that right. is meekness. It's not lying down and one. You know, when, that's how we are wrongly defined things. That's right. Meekness is God is right. I am wrong. That's right. I take God's own and I drop mine. That's meekness. I trash my own and I follow. That's right. That is it. You need that attitude because, and again, do not say that I am too old to learn new things. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. We, that is it's a learning. So because you have come to learn, whatever brought you to the Bible school, be focused. That's right. Really get ready to learn. 
What you don't know, you will ask Papa. That's right. You will ask the lecturers. They will answer you from the scripture. That's right. There's nobody that's going to teach you and bring you his nuances. No, no, it no, must no. be from no the scriptures. And you are fine. That's right. With that, it will help you from a conviction. That's right. And a front and a boldness and audacity. As you leave the Bible school, you're a changed man. Oh, it's going to be exciting. Glory to God, Papa. I'm looking for Oh, my goodness. It's Papa. going to be exciting. Now, for those of you in East Africa, East Africa, these are the numbers. They already have them pinned, but these are the numbers to call right away if you're interested in registering for the Bible School. The venue for the Bible School and the conference that I'll be having each weekend is Kenya Institute of Special Education. It's known as KISE, Kenya Institute of Special Education, located at Kasarani on Tika Superhighway, opposite Kasarani Police Station, just after the International Center of Insects, physiology and ecology now the number to call is on the screen with the details then for those of you in south africa who want to be part of the south african conference at jeminston in johannesburg the, the number to call is 071 04 75 i go over it again 071 04 75 or 073 Zero two five zero four zero eight zero seven three zero two five zero four zero eight. That's for those in South Africa. We will put all of these details on the top of the video so you can have them immediately. You look at it on Facebook. The last thing I want to quickly mention is we have the Abel Damina Ministerial Equipping Network. Ministerial Equipping Network. These are for independent ministers, general overseers and ministers in active ministry who follow me, who follow my teachings, who feed directly from me, who I am responsible for their doctrinal persuasion. I am responsible for their doctrinal persuasion. We have a fellowship, a network, we are putting together a global network where you can identify with your company, company of people who have been affected by my ministry. All graduates of Power Bible School, all graduates of Abel Damina Mentoring Academy, independent ministers who follow my teachings religiously, and ministers of the gospel who have come to a place of doctrinal persuasion by learning from me. You belong to this ministerial equipping network. Dr. Gabriel, one, yes. two minutes. Yes. Just say something yes. to, to ministers of the gospel yes. who are following us right now yes. on the ministerial network. Yes. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for the opportunity. Like the ministerial equipping network is actually a clearly doctrinal network, a network that the basis of it is doctrinal. Because one of the basic things you find that equipping comes by training. That's right. And it's a training is for equipping. That means you are coming in as a student, and persuasion should be the brain behind your coming to enlist. That's right. And you cannot be effective if you have your own hidden agenda. Like you want Dr. Abel Danina, our papa, to eventually get to ordain you. Or you want connection that is what the former association you used to know religiously offers its members. No, this one is purely doctrinal where you will account, you will be demanded, accountability will be demanded from you. Because you will be assessed, you will be assessed on a lot of issues to check your doctrinal soundness. Because you will need to preach that to the people to whom God has given you oversight. And in that, to that effect, it means you need to be thoroughly taught. And you cannot be taught thoroughly until you have decided to submit yourself completely. That's right. No part of you is on in hidden or in reservation. Every part of you is involved because you are going to be involved in teaching others. Yes. And that means you are going to be 100% focused and be in the class and do the required thing. So that in the absence of Papa in your area, you are truly a community. You are truly a son indeed. That's right. And the basis for sonship, of course, is doctrine. It's doctrine. It's not because you talk like Papa. No, no. You have Papa's mannerism. No, you are no. Dr. Abel Damina. So, no. It's doctrine. When people hear you, they should see Dr. Abel Damina in the doctrine you preach. Dr. Gabriel. That is sonship. The DNA of ministry yes. is doctrine. No, the DNA right. of ministry right. is doctrine. Yes, yes, Brother sir. Paul says, you are my son because I have begotten you through the gospel. gospel. Through the gospel. Right. The things you have heard of me among many witnesses. So the DNA of ministry yes, is doctrine. doctrine. You cannot call yourself my spiritual son 
if you don't have my doctrinal persuasion. Yes, sir. Yes, Papa. You, you can look like me. You can cut my hairstyle. You can dress my style. You can learn my mannerisms. That's you can talk like me. You can be charismatic. You know, all of that does not define the fact that you are my spiritual son. Doctrine is the DNA for ministry. Yes, yeah. sir. Doc and, and doctrine is it. Yeah. And when, so in a minister, that the, that's why it's called ministerial equipping network. That's right. So the thing there is all about training. Train. Why do you need to be trained? So that you will be skillful That's right. in your assignment That's right. that Christ has committed into your heart. That's right. See, in the place of training, you will know that you have clear-cut doctrinal persuasion. That's right. You come to a place of sound judgment That's right. concerning issues. And of course, listen to me, man of God. That's why you got, there are practical issues of life that concerns ministry. Because your life is a connection with ministry. Ministry is not just preaching on the pulpit. No, no, no. It affects your marriage. It affects everything about you. That's right. These are the things that Papa was going to be teaching. You know, brother, to straighten brother up. Paul, defining ministerial relationships, says, you have known my doctrine. Yes, Papa. My manner of life. Yes, Papa. My faith. Yes, Papa. My patience. My long-suffering. Mm. How I endured persecution. All of that That's is right. what defines doctrinal That's persuasion. Right. And defines ministry, yes. manner of life, doctrine, faith, patience, long suffering. It's all encompassing, but it is tied around doctrine because doctrine will determine your disposition towards these areas of life. Yes. So that's why the DNA for ministry is doctrinal pathway. That's why in Acts of the Apostles, they say we shall go back to our company. Mm. They went back to their so there's a company yes. that is bratted by doctrine. Yes, it's That's so critical. Right. And you know, they had apostolic tradition. Yes. They said, we will not leave the word of God and serve tables. Yes. We will give ourselves yes, to the Papa. ministry of the word yes. and prayer. Yes. Ministry of the word and prayer. Right. So there, there will be an ongoing training yes. for ministers in the network. Yes. Ongoing. Yes. You're pastoring, you're ministering, you're ministering in your church, you're growing your ministry, you're expanding the work of God, but you also are undergoing training continually because yes. doctrine is lifetime. Yes. And remember, one of the main reasons for a company is doctrine. Number two, looking at how we can get the word of God to influence the nations. Raising disciples, evangelism, building God's people, building an army for the kingdom. All of that is the reason for the network. Yes, and it's exciting, you know, we already have a lot of people signing into the network who have learned from this ministry all over the world. It's a huge family of ministers of the gospel coming together around the globe that are fed from this ministry. So together, we can do greater things for God in this last yes, days. Papa. And if you want to be a part of the ministerial network, you shoot a mail right away to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Dr. Abel, D-R, Abel Damina at yahoo.com. It's like we have a lot of big, big things we're yes, talking sir. about today. <laughs> East Africa Bible School yes, for sir. East Africa. Yes, sir. South Africa, the conference, conference in May. And then Abel Damina Ministerial Equipping Network for ministers of the gospel yes. worldwide who feed from this ministry, whom this ministry is the basis for their doctrinal persuasion. Let me just quickly mention this before we wrap up for the day. I, I, I just opened an account on TikTok. You want to follow my account on TikTok and help me get more people to follow the account on TikTok. We've got a lot of shots. We've got a, got a lot of reels. We've got a lot of, you know, very powerful messages for our TikTok page. You want to join the TikTok page is at Abel Damina. That's the page. At Abel Damina on TikTok. At Abel Damina. When you get there, you will see Dr. Abel Damina and reintroducing Jesus to this generation. At Abel Damina. No pastor, no doctor, no reverend, no prophet, no, 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 no nothing. Just at Abel Damina on TikTok. Dr. Gabriel, just before we wrap up for yes. the day, what a time we have spent here. Just give one or two words to the people out there. Both the South Africa, East Africa, those for Abel Damina Ministerial wow, Network. Wow, it's all wow. training, training. It's all training, training. It's training across East Africa, South Africa, and uh, the people coming again for the Ministerial Network. It's just training. That means the heartbeat of God for the time we live in. Because of this mandate, one way it finds full expression, and you use a state, you keep saying this, to blanket the blue marble planet. That's right. Can only be made possible through this training. That's right. Of course, it's God. Training is men That's right. to blanket the blue marble. That's right. So everyone coming That's knows right. they are a major player Bad, in yes. the end time. 
yes. in the move of God. Yes. So just get ready and know that God is the one calling for this meeting. That's right. And he's calling so that he will train his children, arm them with the gospel that will blaze the whole earth That's right. and set up the stage for the move of the spirit. You know, a man that is not trained cannot reign. That's right. You are trained to reign. To reign. They that Hallelujah. receive the abundance of grace, grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. Reign in the abundance of grace is a function of knowledge. Grow yeah. in grace, grace, grow in knowledge. Hallelujah. So when you grow in the knowledge, you grow in grace, then you reign in life. That's right. You reign That's right. in life. Right. God wants you to reign in ministry. Yes. God wants you to reign in your family. Right. God wants you to reign in your life. God wants you to reign even in ministry. Yes, sir. Raising men, building men, equipping men. God wants you to reign. And the only way that is possible is through training, equipping, building, so you can manifest the glory of God Hallelujah. in the face of Hallelujah. Jesus. I'm really excited. I'm excited what a blessing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we love you. Looking forward to hearing from those of you who are ministers of the gospel and want to be part of Abel Damina Ministerial Equipping Network. We're expecting to hear from you by email today, Dr. Abel Damina, at yahoo.com. Those who want to be part of East Africa's Bible School, the email address and all the details are written there online. Uh, they are written on the video. Look out for it. And those who want to be part of the Southern African Conference in May, the 11th to the 15th, they are in Germiston. The, the details will come on the top of the video. So you can quickly call, WhatsApp, reach out to our people, make plans to be a part of this great revolution the revelation of Jesus taking men into the fullness that God has for them. We love you. Looking forward to hearing from you today. Enjoy the grace of Christ. And we declare that you abound in knowledge, abound in grace, Amen. that your heart comes under the conviction of the Spirit. Amen. And we decree that you will hunger and seek after the truth of Christ Amen. and grow in the same. Amen. Great grace is yours. Amen. You are far from oppression. Amen. Confusion has no hold in your life. The revelation of Jesus grows big in your heart Amen. until nothing else matters. Amen. Thank you, Father, for Thank great grace. Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Help us share the video. Share the videos. Let, let's, let's cover the Blue Marble Planet with the video we just did and encourage people to watch, encourage people to share, encourage people to respond. Lord. We love you guys. And until we see you again, this is Dr. Gabriel and Abel Damina saying that, that the, the kingdom, kingdom of God is in power. power. Amen. Amen. Amen.